we acknowledge the first Australians as the traditional custodians of the continent, whose culture is the oldest living culture in human history. We pay our respects to elders, past, present and emerging, and we respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. They share the memories, traditions and hopes of the traditional ancestors with the new generation today and in the future. We would also like to thank them for looking after this land for thousands of years. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to SciFest 2022. Uh, this is our mini beast magnified uh, session today. We're going to have a really good up close and personal look at some amazing invertebrates or mini beasts. A special thanks goes out to Inspiring Australia and New South Wales for funding all of our sessions for SciFest so we can run all of these great programs for free. Oh, <laughs> one of my mini beasts is just trying to escape. So let me show you. So we've got some things hiding in here and I've just had one of my mini bees here climb out of the container. So this one here is actually a giant millipede. So they've got lots and lots of legs. We'll have a little closer look at it, this one in a moment. It is quite amazing. I'm going to zoom right in, see if we can see their head there. So is it going to focus for us? There we go. So you can see all of those amazing legs. So this one just climbed out of the container. So I'll have to keep an eye on all of these amazing mini beasts. Let's see if it's going to come off my hand now. I wonder what's just under here. I'm going to have a look. Here we go. There's another one. So if you have a look at your hands, everyone, you can see compared to my fingers here, it's about the size of my pinky finger. So they're quite big. And if you hold your hand up, It's about as long as your hand as well. So really impressive, the size of this mini beast. Now, what are mini beasts? What are the invertebrates? So I wonder if any of you are putting in the chat what invertebrates are. What kind of animals do you think we'll be looking at? And for those of you that aren't sure, this one's a webinar. So that's why we're not seeing everyone else. We're just seeing me. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. They have no backbones. Um, that is absolutely true. That's one of the big classifications. Caterpillars are mini beasts. And just for those of you that are asking, the chat is turned off. So questions can go into the Q&A. So oh, it's trying to escape out again. How many legs does a giant mini uh, millipede have? So oh, pop my mouth with my hand again at the moment. So a giant millipede, it's all about the segments. So centipedes have one pair of legs per segment, but millipedes have two pairs of legs per segment. So if I counted up these segments here, oh, there's quite a lot there. So they have at least 11 segments. And because this is a big one, we can see that it's got quite a lot more. So it's probably got at least oh, 60 legs, I would say. Um, and that's something that we could probably count. And they're quite amazing because they're so big. They're actually holding on to the bottom part of my hand as it's um, moving. I'm going to try to put this one away. Obviously, this one's very keen on exploring um, a lot of the areas as well. Oh, we've got more questions coming through. We've got caterpillars. Um, invertebrates have an exoskeleton and no bones. That's a great definition. Thank you very much. We've got someone suggesting that millipedes have a thousand legs. Um, well, it is interesting, isn't it? Because we've got centipedes and we've got millipedes and milli usually stands for, for a thousand. But these ones here are, don't have that many legs. It's all about the segments. So I might share some slides so we can have a look at some pictures and look at the different groups of mini beasts. And then we'll have a look at some more of the real things that I have in the room here with me right now. So let me just share my screen for you. Okay, so 
the first one we're looking at here is called a praying mantis. Now, how many legs does a praying mantis have? If you wanted to put that out in the Q&A for me, you can be very quick in count or you might know the answer already. Six, yes, X or eight. Yeah, mostly we're getting six. Absolutely. So praying mantis have six legs. And the six legs are important. It's a definition of the group we call insects. So not only do insects have six legs, they've also got three body parts. Okay, they've got a head, a body, otherwise known as a thorax, and the abdomen. Now, all insects also have antennae. And a lot of them have wings, but not all insects have wings. So here we've got our six legs, four legs, middle legs and back legs. The praying mantis front legs are adapted to help it hunt. So they actually use their legs to flick out and pull in their prey. So if you imagine the front part of their legs here is like your fingers, then the part of their legs with the spikes on it is like your forearms. And this part is the upper arm. So their long fingers kind of pull back and attach, grab the food between their long sort of hands and their forearms. And prey mantis can be identified because they've got this really unique shaped head. It's a triangle shaped head with very, very big eyes. But they are absolutely a type of insect. Here's another type of insect. These are the beetles. Now, often the body shape can help us identify them. Now, these ones here, remember how many legs do we have? Six legs for an insect. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got our head, our body or our thorax and our abdomen. Now, if we have a look at those mandibles, they're the mouth parts of the beetle. And that's one of the really interesting ways we can tell a beetle apart from a bug. Now, bugs are a particular group of insects. So here we've got the antennae of the beetle, very interesting looking antennae. Under these hard, shiny um, exoskeleton, there are actually wings as well. And I'll just show you our bug here. So this particular one here is a type of bug, a shield bug, often recognized as a stink bug. We know it's an insect because that's right, six legs again. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got antennae. These ones do also have wings, but underneath here is a very long special mouth part. So let's first of all, look again at our beetles. Our beetles have sideways mouth parts. So just imagine everyone, try to do this with me. It's like you're eating a hamburger. You turn the hamburger on the side, put your thumbs in your cheeks and have your mouth, your hands moving side by side. Crunch, 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 munch, munch, munch. That is how those mandibles work, sideways chewing mouth parts. They're eating leaf litter and bark and all sorts of amazing things, helping our soil keep nice and healthy. A little bit of the forest recyclers. So sideways munching mouth parts. But if we imagine the bugs, they're often found up on plants and they are sap suckers. And sap suckers do exactly that. They suck the sap out of plants. And it's like they've got a really long straw. So everyone, if you want to put your arm out, like you've got a big straw for a mouth part and make a big slurpy noise for me. So what it's like is they use their very pointy nose, called a proboscis, and they dig it in to the plant and then they suck the sap out of the plant. So often bugs are associated with stickiness because of all of that sap. So sap suckers are our bugs and our sideways crunching mouth parts are our beetles. So that is one of the ways you can tell those groups apart, even though they look really, really similar. Beetles often found in the leaf litter and on the ground and your bugs often found up in your plants. And a little bit of mini beast trivia. There are more species of beetles than any other type of animal in the world. So the biggest group of animals are these invertebrates with no backbones. The largest group of invertebrates are your insects with those six legs. And the largest group of insects are the beetles. So if you're not sure when someone says, what animal is that? Always say beetle. 
you've got a good chance of being being correct. Okay, so now moving on to some more legs. There is a theme here. A lot of these animals we can identify by the number of legs that they've got. So what animal is this? If you wanted to put it in the Q&A. My q and is hiding down here. We've got lots of suggestions. Oh, we've got arachnids, spiders, 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 spiders. Oh, well done, everyone. Oh, a tarantula is a type of spider. This one isn't a tarantula. It's actually a wolf spider. And correctly, people are saying that they've got eight legs. So spiders, or this big group called arachnids, we can identify by the number of legs. So eight legs for a spider. Now, there are about 30,000 species of spiders around the world, and Australia does have quite a few of these. Some of them being quite big, like some of our huntsmen's, can be as big as my hand or even bigger. But the spiders will live in lots of different types of habitats. All spiders do have fangs. So that's why we need to be really super careful when we're exploring for mini beasts that we don't put our hands anywhere that we're not supposed to. Sorry, my millipede's trying to make an escape again. So the other group within spiders, which that arachnid group is made up of spiders, scorpion, ticks and mites. So those four groups, they all have eight legs. Now, here we go. We had a question early on about what the difference between a centipede and a millipede is. So let's have a look. So the centipede here, they have one pair of legs per segment. And if you love doing maths activities, you can have a go at this one as well. So one pair of legs per segment and centipedes have at least 13 segments. Their first pair of legs are actually modified into fangs. So centipedes can actually give a bite. And you might notice that the back end of the centipede almost looks like the head. So this animal is doing a really special adaptation to try to pretend to look different. So if they lose the end segment where their abdomen is, it's not going to be as bad as if they lose where their head is. So their antennae, it looks like they've got fake antennae coming out the abdomen. So one pair of legs per segment. And they've got quite a flattened body. Whereas our millipedes, like we saw, have a really rounded body and two pairs of legs per segment. So there's some of the ways that you can tell centipedes and millipedes apart. Flat body for the centipedes, rounded body for the millipedes, two pairs of legs per segment for the millipedes, and one pair of segment for the centipede. Okay, now this is a common one. This is really, really close up, this one. So if you have a look at your pinky fingernail, imagine that's about the size of this mini beast usually. And these ones will curl up into a ball when you lift up a brick or a rock or some leaf litter in the backyard or at school. You might see these running around or curling up into a ball. I wonder if anyone knows what they're called. Got a couple of people thinking about it. Oh, you've seen them at your house. We've seen them before. I wonder if anyone knows what they're called. Oh, woodlouse, a caterpillar, an aphid. Lots of great. Oh, dung beetle. Oh, a few people have seen them, but are not sure what they're called. These are called slaters and they're actually a crustacean. So they're in the same group as say lobsters and prawns. Most of that big group called crustaceans live in the ocean, but this group lives on land. So they have 10 or more legs in this group of crustacean. And this one's a slater, sometimes called a pill bug because they curl up into that ball. I've got a couple of more. Oh, a slater bug, absolutely. Oh, someone's had them as pets before as well. Certainly quite common in your backyard. But not everything has an exoskeleton. So the groups we've just looked at are in a big one called arthropod, which means jointed leg. And if we actually have a look, we can see those joints on the legs, on the legs of the centipede, on the legs of the spider. So they mean jointed legs, and that's the big group it's in. But there is another group that's a huge group. Again, lots of them found in the marine environment. <laughs> I'm not sure how the centipede will go falling off the table, so I've just grabbed it again. So this one here is a worm, which is in a big group called annelids. So lots of different, different worms found in our uh, 
um, terrestrial, our land environments, our backyards. And these are again, especially good for moving through the soil and making sure it's something called aerated. So air can get into the soil. It means that the plants can breathe, they can get oxygen into their roots, but it also means when it does rain, the water can get through, nutrients can get through. So really important. And essentially, don't tell anyone, if they're a little bit like poo tubes. They eat one end and then it comes out the other end as really important fertilizer to give more nutrients to those plants. So worms, really great for the environment. These ones you'd recognize as well, snails. There are lots of different types of snails. They're in a group called mollusks. And again, most of the mollusks are actually found in the ocean. But we do have these ones found on land, different types of land snails. There are heaps of different kinds. And of course, slugs, which are also a mollusk as well. Really similar, but of course they don't have the shells there. So these are just a few examples of some of those mini beasts that you might recognize. And these, oh, there's snails in your mailbox. <laughs> very, very common for snails and slugs to be hiding underneath um, areas where they can stay in the shade, they can stay cool, they don't wanna dry out. Um, they've got, they're really quite amazing animals. And they use that slime trail to help um, uh, move over the ground so um, that they don't um, get cut their skin. It actually helps protect them, gives them a barrier between the ground and their body. Okay, so now we know a little bit about some of those different groups of mini beasts. Let's have a closer look at some. Now, I wonder if anyone can see anything in this plant. Now I'm going to put my hand up just to give you an idea how zoomed in it is. So I wonder if anyone wants to put into the chat, oh sorry, the Q&A, if they can see any, any animals in here. Well, some people can and they think that they're stick insects, absolutely, or leaf bugs. But I wonder if anyone wants to put down how many they can see. And then I'm going to point them all out to you. So I'm shaking the table. Don't do that. So we've got stick insects. They can, some people can see one, three, three to four, two. So what do we call it when animals like this blend in to the background? That is really, really hard to see. Hmm. Well, someone can see five three or oh, 20. Well, there's definitely not 20. Oh, camouflage. Well done, everyone. And you're right, it, the word we use is camouflage. And we use that when an animal blends into the environment. Now I'm gonna point out all of the ones that I can see at the moment. We've got one here. This is an adult female crown stick insect. We've got number two here, which is a baby or a juvenile um, spiny leaf insect. We've got one here, which is a titan stick insect. Another one here, which is a male crown stick insect. And then there is one just up here, which I'm going to take down <laughs> they are excellent at climbing and now I can't reach it there we go so this one here is a crown stick insect as I mentioned we've got six legs so we know it's an insect and it actually gets its name if we look at its head that little crown on the back of its head is where it gets its name. Now, I might just see if we can, oh, really wants to stay in that beautiful plant. Oh, there we go. So the stick insects are really good at camouflaging. 
This one here has a pattern on it. So sometimes they're plain in color and sometimes they can be quite bright in color. I'm gonna put this one down here so we can see it there. So they use their camouflage of their body and their pattern to blend in to the environment. They sometimes will stay really still to try to hide. Sometimes we'll see if she might open her wings. I don't think she's gonna open her wings, but we can see that the legs are also slightly shaped to look like a stick as well. So they're really amazing, but what they are even better at, this is a baby of the same sort, of the same kind, is how they grow. So some animals, you can see this one here, that's probably a couple of months old. And they hatch out of eggs this size. So as they grow, they shed their skin and they grow. And they look identical as babies as they do as adults. So it takes time to grow to full size. But there are other animals that go through a really big change in their life cycle, like butterflies, dragonflies, cicadas. They go through a huge change called metamorphosis. Okay, so different types of insects and mini beasts go through different types of growth. These ones lay an egg, the egg hatches, and they are small versions of their adults. Now, it usually takes about seven times of shedding their skin and growing to get this size. And we can see it's almost as big as my hand. The larger stick insects are certainly much bigger though. I'm just gonna go back to some of your questions while we're having a look at these mini beasts here. So we can see the millipedes crawling around the background as well. Uh, someone was asking how old this one is. So the small one is probably only two months old and the big one here is ooh, six months old. So the stick insects in captivity can probably live for 18 months, okay? In the wild, they lay lots of eggs and not many of them will grow to become a full size adult, okay? The stick insects are vegetarian, so they're just going to eat fresh leaves. And what's so good about it is those fresh leaves, when they get dry, I then feed them to the millipedes and the other animal that is hiding in that tray, which we'll look at in a moment. Where can you buy them? You can buy these from pet stores. So depending on where you are, um, you'll have a pet store nearby, Stick Insects. There's another company I can share called Mini Beasts Australia, and they will, um, you can buy them online. Um, which Mini Beast has the most legs? Um, of millipede, of course. Um, how long do Stick Insects live for in the wild? It depends, but in captivity, these bigger ones can live for you know, a year to 18 months. Will the millipedes eat the stick insects? No, so the millipedes will eat dried up um, plant material. And we've got another question there, am I a scientist? So I'm what's called a science communicator. I studied science at school. I studied at university, lots of science subjects. I worked at the Australian Museum for 20 years and I worked with lots of scientists, but I'm not technically a scientist. Now, I'm just going to get another one of our stick insects out, our little one, just so we can have another little look, a little comparison. So these ones love hanging upside down. These are called the spiny leaf insects. So these are probably three months old, but because it's winter, they're not growing um, a lot at the moment. They're actually staying quite small, waiting for it to warm up a little bit. So these ones here, instead of camouflaging to look like a stick, they camouflage to look like a leaf. Now I'm just gonna see if I can pop her down. 
these ones will actually move from side to side when they're feeling um, to pretend to be a leaf. Now, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in really close. There we go. I might actually put her on the dirt, not on a brown leaf because camouflage works, doesn't it? And she's hard to see. Oops, I've lost another stick insect. There we go. So we can see her camouflaged, still using her body shape, her tail curled up. What other animal curls up their tail? I wonder if anyone can put in the chat. So not only is she camouflaging to look like the material behind her, but she's doing something that's a little bit tricky. Uh, let's have a look to see if you know. Oh, it kind of looks like a scorpion. Well done. What a great, what we call an observation. So curling the tail up to look a little bit like a scorpion is a great, what we call a strategy to blend into the environment. So what it's doing is trying to not only not look like an animal, I'm trying to look like a leaf, but I'm also looking like a scorpion. Now, lots of animals will know scorpions are not good to eat. So it gives them an extra way to protect themselves. Now, I'm just going to move the stick insects, guys, because I know there's another animal in here. Now, I wonder if anyone's seen, we might have seen it right at the beginning. Let's see if I can find it. I just want to put my stick insects nice and safely back on the branch because I don't want to lose them because you know what? Sometimes they are such good camouflage that I can't always find them again. So we know that we've got our millipedes here. I'm going to use some big tweezers. And we're going to have a look through what with a leaf litter. Did anyone see anything move then? Wonder what this is. You might, a few of you might want to take a guess what animal this is. Oh, got some question marks. Oh, a worm, a beetle. Oh, a slater. I'm going to pick it up. Let's turn it around so we can see his beautiful face. This is a giant burrowing cockroach. Look at that beautiful face. This one's probably one to two years old, maybe three years old. And they love to dig. So the first thing he's going to do is try to burrow back down under that leaf litter under the ground. And they'll do it very, very quickly. So these ones, we have lots of species of cockroach found in Australia. Most of them are native cockroaches living in the leaf litter just like this doing great work keeping our soils healthy. But the ones that we find in our home are the ones that have been introduced. Okay, they're not native. The same way as we find millipedes, there's lots of really small millipedes living in our backyards. Um, they're also an introduced species. So there's about five introduced species of cockroach that cause lots of damage. But this one is a native one great for our soil. The same way as this forest millipede or the giant millipede is great for creating um, great forest environments. So it's important to think about that sometimes the animals that we see are not native mini beasts, but are introduced ones. So these are just a few examples of some um, really awesome uh, native mini beasts. So stick insects, giant forest millipedes, burrowing cockroaches are just a few of them. And hopefully you know a little bit more about how to identify these animals by thinking about the number of legs and maybe where they're found. Now, um, for some of you that might need to head off, I understand, no problems. Thank you so much for joining me today. But if you wanna stay on, I'll try to go through some of your questions. 
um, that we've got here as well. So let me scroll through and see if we can get to some of your questions as well. Oh, lots of you recognize that they were the cockroach, the Bahrain cockroaches, well done. Uh, what's the oldest um, one that I have? So it's probably one of these crown stick insects. I'll get this one out. So this one here is a slightly bigger one. She's lost a leg. She's only got one front leg here instead of two. Um, and she's probably at my oldest. She's well over a year. Um, but the giant um, forest millipedes, they, they could be a couple of years old. Um, and the same as the burrowing cockroaches. They will live for many years. Um, the burrowing cockroaches can live up to 10 years. Uh, so we think the ones that I've got there are probably three years old. Um, and the same probably goes for maybe a year old for the forest millipedes as well. Oh, now I've got one stuck to my hand. Um, what are the horns of the, Hercu um, uh, the Hercules beetle for? Um, a lot of the time the beetles have horns. Um, they use them for fighting. So they're either showing off saying, hey, I'm awesome, I'm big, I'm the best. Um, but sometimes they're actually using them for, um, for defense and battle and those kinds of things. Um, what are stick insects predators? That's a great question. All of the things I've shown you today are what we call a herbivore. They're all plant eaters. But what kind of animals would eat a stick insect? Well, a praying mantis, spider, um, frogs, lizards, all sorts of things, especially a really big stick insect, birds, all sorts of things. Um, would probably eat them. Um, have I named them? No, I've probably got about a hundred of the crown stick insects um, at the moment, all going from, you know, baby hatchlings that are two days old, all the way up to ones that are um, almost over a year old. So I haven't named them, I have to say. Um, what's my favourite mini beast? Well, ooh, praying mantis, I think. Um, I often will find baby praying mantis in my backyard. Um, question here, how do you tell if a mini beast is um, poisonous? Well, that's a great question. You've got two sides of that. Things that are venomous are things that need to bite you. Something that's poisonous, you need to bite it. So I don't recommend you going out and trying to bite any of the mini beasts in your backyard. Um, but things that are, that are venomous, um, often they'll have um, fangs. So if you are exploring for mini beasts, wear some gardening gloves, tell an adult what you're doing, and just be really careful, maybe doing lots of looking, photographing, um, and don't touch. And if you don't know what it is, definitely don't touch it and tell an adult. How many types of beetles are there? I think there's like hundreds of thousands, probably even a million. There's lots of different types of mini bees that probably haven't even been identified um, by scientists properly. Um, do I have any butterflies or spiders to see? I don't at the moment. Um, are hissing cockroaches natives? Yeah, some of these burrowing cockroaches will actually hiss at you if, um, if you're, you've poked them a little bit too much. Um, are there any uh, non-native insects in Australia? How do you tell the difference? Telling the difference between a native um, mini beast or insect and a non-native is really tricky. It's often where they're living. So sometimes a lot of the ones in urban environments, like the garden snails, um, the, the really little Portuguese millipedes, the cockroaches, they're kind of inside your house or near your house. So unfortunately, a lot of the ones in that urban environment can be introduced, but lots of them are native as well. Okay, last couple of questions. Um, are caterpillars pests? Um, no, not necessarily. A pest is just something that eats a plant or an animal that it's not supposed to. So it, caterpillars um, can do lots of damage if there's lots of them, but they are also really important. Once that caterpillar turns into a butterfly or a moth, they're really important pollinators So and really important parts of the food chain. So they could be a pest um, to maybe some plants or veggies in your backyard, but overall, no, they're really important. Uh, can you train a mini beast? Um, well, probably at the moment I need to really train my millipede. <laughs> Where's it going? Can you see it coming out the side? To try not to escape. So that's why I usually have lids on my um, on my tanks so they don't escape. Um, and it is really, really tricky for those kinds of things because they're, they're natural animals. They're just exploring um, and looking through the environment. So 
Um, in terms of training, oh, it's probably pretty difficult. I know when you get to animals like, say, octopus, which are a type of invertebrate as well, they're a type of that mollusk group, they certainly can be trained. Um, they're considered to be the smartest of the invertebrates. But in general, um, a little bit too difficult. Now, okay, everyone, I think we have to wrap it up. Now, I will be sharing lots of links to help you discover more about the sort of mini beasts in your backyard, how to create mini beast friendly backyards as well and encourage some of those native animals into the area as well. So thank you so much for your fabulous questions. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. So see you later, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.